Now let's move on to a very important concept in matrix, the multiplications of matrices. This will be very important because this is usually tested. And this is also kind of straightforward because once you know the steps, remember the steps, you definitely will get this correct in the examinations. Now let's break it down. Supposedly, we have two matrices. In order for us to multiply them, the number of columns in the first matrix must match the number of rows in the second matrix. For example, if matrix A has a size M by N and matrix B is of the size N by P, if you multiply A with B, you will get a matrix of size M by P. Let's do an example. For example, if a matrix A, let's say we have uh, three rows, two columns. We just do something like one, right? And then we have a um, matrix B. We have two rows, two columns. In this case, when we multiply them, we will get a matrix of three rows, two columns, meaning it will look like this, where we, now we have to figure out like what what the missing question marks represents. And let's say if we have as an example where A is usually equal to uh, 1, 4, 2, 5, 6, where you have three rows and two columns. And if we have B, where you have um, three rows and three columns, in this case, the number of columns in the first matrix A is 2, and the number of rows in the second matrix B is 3. You know that 2 not equal to 3, so this operation is not possible. And based on these two examples, you can tell that matrix multiplication is not commutative, meaning A multiplied by B is not the same as B multiplied by A. This is different from what we know about multiplication of integers. Usually, if you multiply by two integers, the order doesn't matter. But for matrix computation, in multiplication, you must remember that the order of multiplication of matrices matters. Now, let's look at another example to reinforce the concept we just learned. If you have a matrix A, that is of size 2 by 3, meaning 2 rows and 3 columns. You have matrix B of dimension 3 by 2, meaning it has 3 rows and 2 columns. You can multiply them together, and then you will get a matrix that is 2 by 2, meaning these two matrix have 2 rows and 2 columns. You can see that the dimension of the new matrix come from the dimension of the first matrix and the second matrix. The number of rows of the new matrix is the same as the number of rows in the first matrix, and the number of columns in the new matrix is the number of columns in the second matrix. So that the number of columns in the first matrix is 3, and the number of rows in the second matrix is 3, these two have to be the same in order for the matrix multiplication to be possible. But for the new matrix, this dimension does not appear in the new matrix. Now let's look at an example to see how we can calculate the multiplications of matrices. As you can see in the slide, we have a 2 by 3 matrix A and 3 by 2 matrix B. Since the number of 
columns in matrix A is the same as number of rows in matrix B. We know that multiplication is possible. And the resulting new matrix will be 2 by 2 in size. For each element in the resulting matrix, you multiply corresponding elements from the row of matrix A and the column of matrix B. Note, it's the row from the matrix A and column of matrix B. You multiply the element and then you sum the products. So in this example, we have the first row of matrix A as 1, 2, 3, and first column of matrix B as 7, 9, 11. To calculate the first element, which is the element in the first row and first column of the resulting matrix, you take this first row of matrix A, 1, 2, 3, you take this first column of matrix B, 7, 9, 11, you multiply each corresponding element and then you sum them up. So you have the first element of the first row in matrix A, which is 1, and the first element of the first column in matrix B, which is 7. You multiply with them 1 by 7, and then you move on to the next set 2 multiplied by 9, and then to the last one which is the last element of the first row in matrix A, number 3, and last element of the first column in matrix B, which is 11. So you have 1 multiplied by 7 plus 2 multiplied by 9 plus 3 multiplied by 11, and you will get 58. Now that you have computed the first entry, let's move on to the next one. Now you are in the second column of the resulting matrix. So that means you should move on to the second column of matrix B. So instead of 7, 9, 11, our focus is now on 8, 10, and 12. As again, you multiply each of the element by the corresponding other element, and then you sum them up. In this case, from the first matrix, you have 1, 2, 3, and the second matrix, you have 8, 10, 12. So you multiply 1 by 8, plus 2 by 10, and 3 by 12. And you will get number 64, which you will put in the first row, second column of the new matrix. Now we move on to the second row, first column of the new matrix. Since this is at the second row, we also need to move to the second row of the first matrix. And we will be at the first column of the second matrix because right now we are at the first column of the new matrix. We will look at 4, 5, and 6, which is the second row of the first matrix, and 7, 9, 11, which is the first column of the second matrix. Multiply by 4 by 7, and you add 5 by 9, and then you add 6 by 11, you will get 139. Now for the last one, I leave it as an exercise for you. Please take one minute to try to figure this out. It should be pretty obvious if you understand the last three examples I show you. Remember that now you are computing the second row and second column of the new matrix. That means you will be using the second row in the first matrix and second column of the second matrix. Here's the answer. Please check whether you have done it correctly. Here is another example that you can try. Note that the dimension has changed for this example. First, remember to compute the dimension of the resulting matrix first and then try to figure out how to compute each of the elements of the new matrix. You can see that for this new matrix, it will have a dimension of 3 by 3. 
please check whether you have gotten the right answer. As you can see these two examples, even though they are the two same matrix, the order of multiplication actually matters. In the first case, you end up with a 2 by 2 matrix. In the second case, you end up with a 3 by 3 matrix. This shows us that matrix multiplication is not commutative, meaning matrix A multiplied by matrix B will not give you the same result as matrix B multiplied by matrix A. Now let's try calculating the multiplication of 2 by 2 matrix with another 2 by 2 matrix. As you can see, the end result will also be a 2 by 2 matrix. For the first element, which is the first row and first column, we have A multiplied by E because A is from the first row and first column of the first matrix, and E is the first row and first column of the second matrix. You multiply by them and then you add B multiplied by G because B is the element of the first row and the second column of the first matrix. Multiply by G, which is the second row and first column of the second matrix. You do the following and so on and so forth, and you get the answer. Now, let's try this with two real examples. Try to do this on your own so that we can compare with the answer later. Have you checked your answers? All the steps are given here. Please go ahead and verify whether you have done them correctly. It is easy to make mistakes, but enough practice will help be prepared for the examinations. One thing to note from this exercise is that even though we have two matrices, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, 6, 7, 8, the order of multiplication matters. As you can see, if you multiply the first matrix by the second matrix in the order where 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, multiplied by 5, 6, 7, 8, versus the matrix 5, 6, 7, 8, multiplied by 1, 2, 3, 4, the answers you get will be different. Now, this is a very simple exercise where you multiply by a 3 by 2 matrix with a 2 by 1 matrix. Take 30 seconds to try to do this on your own. Did you get the correct answer? If not, just try again. I'm pretty sure you can get this figure out. Now, one more exercise for you. Try multiplying these two matrix together. This is actually a trick question because this is actually not possible. Do you know why this is not possible? It is because the dimension do not match. The first matrix has a dimension of 2 by 1. The second matrix has a dimension of 3 by 2. Remember that in order for us to do matrix multiplication, the number of columns of the first matrix must be equal to the number of the rows of the second matrix. In this case, number of columns of the first matrix is 1, but the number of rows of the second matrix is 3. So this multiplication is not possible.